Now that we have an understanding of getting the proper contrast while preserving the highlights and shadow details, let's work on saturation. We'll study how the saturation affects two different scenarios, skin tones and landscapes. Saturation simply modifies the color strength of the image. Keep in mind that contrast adds a certain amount of saturation to the image, so it's always a good idea to fine-tune the saturation after adding contrast. But how much saturation should we be adding to a log image? How do we know when to stop? While well, going by what we see can work. For some, using the tools explained in this video is easier. Let's bring up the vector scope, which is another vital indicator to measure the saturation strength, the skin tone hue, or if our image has a certain color cast. The vector scope is a dial showing a representation of the color strength across color bar targets and the crosshair reference. The more saturated a color is, the more it will stretch towards the edges of the dial from the center. Likewise, color lacking saturation will stay closer to the center. We can turn on the skin tone indicator which is a helpful reference showing the skin tone hues location on the graph. Also, we can quickly tell if our image has a certain color cast by checking how off-center the graph is in reference to the center of the crosshairs. In an image displaying people, we should give most of our attention to the skin tones and we should build our color correction around that. Having a healthy and accurate skin tone is of vital importance to truly representing the identity of each person in our videos. Let's create a new node, label it exposure and dial in some contrast while staying within the broadcast safe limits, adjusting the gamma in the primary wheels to compensate for the contrast adjustment. Bring down the gain to recover some of the details in the highlights. Create a new node, label it saturation and add about 65 saturation or until the graph on the vector scope grows about half of its size. Create a node for our skin tone adjustment and let's check if the skin tone falls within the reference line on the vector scope. Create a circular power window and size it around a well exposed region of the person's face or forehead. Power windows function similar to masks in other applications. Click on the highlight button to mask everything out but the power window and check to see where the hue sets in reference to the skin tone indicator. In our case, the vector scope reveals that the skin tone hue is leaning towards the yellow and green side of the quadrant. To correct that, head over to the curves panel, choose hue versus hue and select the red color range which contains most of the skin tone color palette. Then keeping an eye on the vector scope, rotate the hue until the skin tone falls within the reference line. Click on the highlight button and disable the power window to see how the adjustment affected the skin tone. You can keep adjusting the hue versus hue value to fine tune the tone. Many times we end up with video as well as stills from the same shoot and we want both to match as close as possible when submitting to Stocksy. In that case, it is very useful to color correct our footage with a reference still. Import a photo, preferably with the same lighting scenario as the clip from the gallery. Then click on split screen and selected still images. This way we can have the video and still image next to each other, making it easier to compare and match the color grading since now we can check the scope side by side. In a landscape scenario, we should always try to preserve maximum details in the highlights, like in a cloudy sky or a sunset. Considering that we are working with correctly exposed and white balanced log footage, like this one, let's introduce contrast to our liking while keeping an eye on the scopes and making sure we are preserving every detail in the shadows or highlights. You can brighten up the mid-tones with the gamma and bring down the gain to recover possible highlights information in the clouds. Another efficient way to recover detail is by using the highlights or shadow slider in the primaries. In the following node, let's push the saturation until a grass and sky starts to look natural for this time of the day. Keep an eye on the vector scope and make sure the graph sits centered and no color casts are polluting our image. In a landscape where green is the dominant color, giving the image a color cast, as seen on the vector scope graph leaning towards the greens, you can quickly balance it using the tint slider until the image looks balanced and the graph is centered. And that's it for this episode. Make sure to practice these steps on your footage and next we'll learn how to balance our image if it has certain color casts. See you next time!